Hello students, in the series that we have started on theories of international relations, today I am going to discuss with you idealism in international relations. It is also one of the important contribution in the field of IER, although it is not that much systematic a study. In this topic, today we are going to discuss the meaning of idealism, uh, the definitional side of it the various features, characteristics or key assertions that are made by idealist scholars and some of the criticisms and limitations of the idealist theory. As the term itself suggests ideal, it means that something which is not real or practical. Sometimes it is also called as utopian because the ideas that are floated by idealist scholars they are too idealistic to be practically possible. In journal parlance on international matters, idealism is a term applied to any idea, goal or practice considered to be impractical. So it is even called impractical for the reason that practically it is very difficult to be made possible. Now there can be many fascinating ideas or highest values that can be based on morality or ethics that should be there around us. For example, if we talk about say eradication of nuclear weapons, we all want a peaceful world, so working for a peaceful world, establishing peace, how it can be done and how the international community can come together to make it happen. So it is also one such objective a perfect international organization so as you know you already know that uh, we have many international organizations some regional organizations also so when we talk about say league of nations or united nations they are also not perfect organizations international community they always want a perfect organization that remains successful every time whenever they want to stabilize a situation that could ensure coordination, cooperation among various states and other non-state actors so that a peaceful life can be made possible. End of equality, it is also again a highest goal that should be there. A just and fair world where all the countries uh, and all the people, they can survive, live with dignity. End of hostilities and conflict of all kinds a common concern for international community that you know states the a common concern that they are having is for the cooperation stability of humanity etc so all these common concerns are there all these very highest values are there some of the ideas are too good to be real but idealism believes that uh, these things should happen these things should be there and state should work for them Idealism is not much concerned with what it is, rather it is more concerned about what ought to be. IR scholars, I mean idealist scholars, they believe that we should work for a better world and we should work in the direction uh, in areas like uh, where work has yet to be done. Idealism stood for certain highest ideals like democracy, justice, liberty, freedom equality etc. In the professional study of international relations, the term is generally employed in two ways. One is a broader way and the other one is the narrow understanding of idealism. Now when we go by the broad understanding of idealism, it sees idealism as a perennial doctrine or disposition to world, world affairs which can be witnessed in all historical periods where independent political communities exist in a condition of anarchy. In the absence of central government, idealism is an optimistic doctrine which seeks to transcend the international anarchy and create a more cosmopolitan and harmonious world order. So if we go by this broad understanding of idealism, here we can say that uh, throughout all the historical periods, there were certain people, there were certain scholars, those who think beyond their time, those who believe that uh, positive things are still possible, those who think uh, 
you know, other than what their governments used to think. Those who float their ideas, knowing that internationally a kind of anarchy is prevailing. Those whose ideas differ from the ideas of uh, the ground realities of the time. Idealism, in that sense, it, te it seeks to transcend the international anarchy, knowing that there is anarchy prevailing, but it seeks to transcend it and work for a more cosmopolitan and harmonious world order. If we go by the narrow understanding of idealism, it sees idealism as intimately tied to the interwar period, the period between 1919 and 1939, or you can say the period between World War I and World War II. According to this narrow understanding, idealism is a doctrine that dominated the first phase of IR theorizing, emphasizing the growing interdependence and unity of mankind and bound up with the experiment of internationalism that was the League of Nations. It received a visceral critical attack in E.H. Carr's The Twenty Years Crisis. So if we go by this narrow understanding of international relations, uh, narrow understanding of idealism, it believed primarily that uh, it is something which is specific uh, only to the interwar period. In this period, the, the emphasis of uh, idealist scholar was more on focusing on interdependence of state and bringing, establishing some kind of unity in the mankind. They have also acknowledged the limitation of state in ensuring all these things and that is the reason they have given importance to internationalism or they have acknowledged the role of international organization in ensuring that. With this primary idea during this phase between, the, uh, between 1919 and 1939, they have created League of Nations. Although these ideas, I mean, uh, during this interwar phase, these, uh, the ideas which are floated by idealist scholars, they faced a lot of criticisms and particularly they were criticized by E. H. Carr in his seminal work, The Twenty Years Crisis that was published in 1939. Now one question that comes to our mind is that who all are the people who have actually contributed to the field, to the field of idealism. Since 1880s there has been a lot of scholars who were working and who were giving views that can be broadly clubbed and seen in that idealist domain. Here we can include the names such as Alfred Zimran, Norman Angel, John Menard Keynes uh, that has given the Keynesian model to address uh, the problem of unemployment and balancing capitalism, J. A. John A. Hobson, Leonard Wolf, Gilbert Murray, Florence Stavell, Philip Henry Carr, 11th Marquess of Lothian, Arnold G. Toynbee, Lester Pearson and David Davis. So these are the people, those who have contributed in the field of idealism. So they have done researches and their conclusions were more or less same. So they were looking for a better world. They were looking for a more stable world. They were focusing on the areas. They were focusing on the ideas which seems too far-fetched, too unreal to be practical. In the American study of international relations, idealism usually refers to the school of thought that personified in American diplomatic history by Woodrow Wilson. It was such that uh, it is sometimes even referred as Wilsonialism or Wilsonian idealism. And uh, uh, Woodrow Wilson he has particularly highlighted uh, the role of uh, international organizations. And he also, like uh, in his uh, principles that he has suggested, he has also highlighted the importance of acknowledging the right to self-determination of different states. Wilsonian idealism was also sometimes seen as the precursor to liberal international relations theory. 
So from this angle we can even say that idealism can also be seen as a precursor to liberal international relations theory. Now another important critical area is how to define idealism. It was a very major, it was a tough challenge because idealism was not much theorized. Idealism to many scholars was even vague. So one of the most difficult term in international relations as there was no commonly acceptable meaning of idealism that was existing. So idealism it has been defined by many scholars in different ways and there is no agreed definition of idealism. So different scholars they have seen idealism from different views. In fact, uh, they were not uh, very much concerned when they have expressed their views what ought to be or how the world should be stabilized or how the world should be organized. Their primary concern was not that they are going to contribute to the field of idealism. Rather, later on once they have contributed, their views, their opinions, their conclusions, their observations, they were all seen from an idealist perspective. Even those scholars who invoke idealism also have a very vague idea about it. And that is the reason that different people, they have seen idealism from different lenses, from different angles. Idealism sometimes is also called as utopianism because it is an approach to international relations that stresses the importance of moral values. Moral value may guide our day-to-day -day life. Moral values may also have some applicability for the society. But for states in international relations, moral values have a limited role to play. But idealism gives a lot of importance to moral values. And the actions of the states, they should be judged on to the basis of those moral values and ethics. Apart from that, they also introduce another standard on the behavior of state and that is called legalism. It means that whatever actions that state has taken, they should be judged from a legal angle also. It means that whatever that has been done, what international law says about it, is that thing fair, was that action just, or it was unjust, it was unfair, it was arbitrary, it was exploitative or anything. And suppose if an action goes against the set uh, uh, you know, laws and uh, set international laws and norms, then the state should also be held accountable, it should also be punished. Apart from that, idealist scholars, they also believe that across states, a harmony of interest prevails. And they also believe that the foreign policy of the state, it should be directed towards that commonality, that harmony of interest, rather than towards national interest and power. It means that contrary to the popular realistic perception that state always want to pursue its uh, national interest and state wants to acquire power to pursue their national interest or the primary guiding force for the state or the primary motivation of the state is to pursue its national interest, expand and take whatever actions that are necessary without bothering about international laws, without bothering about international organizations or world public opinion. Idealist to scholars, they believe that foreign policy, it should focus on more on areas of cooperation. It means that state, they should find out the areas, they should explore the areas where they can actually cooperate and they should find out the opportunities. They should uh, uh, take actions, right? They should establish uh, uh, regional organizations or some common platforms through which they can pursue, they can move in the direction of having, uh, you know, uh, pursuing the commonality of interest. Another important thing is that uh, when we examine, I mean, uh, what is international life and what it shouldn't be. So idealism is in a way uh, focused more on what should be 
rather than focusing on what is. For example, in prison times, there are a lot of challenges. There are a lot of fears. There are a lot of threats. Around us, we can see that uh, there are a lot of instability. Currently, there is a crisis going on at the international level. Simultaneously, in various parts of the world, in various corners of the world, you see that one tension of, or the other is boiling. Yet, idealist to scholars, they believe that uh, we should focus on what ought to be. It means that uh, which things are missing, which areas have yet to be covered, which are the areas where cooperation is still possible. Idealist to scholars, they believe that uh, politicians at the international level, they should, uh, they should be given importance in the sense that uh, uh, if they carry these idealist values, then they will be more inclined towards cooperation rather than conflict. They will be more concerned about the life, prosperity, development or quality of life of people rather than their own personal vices or competition or aspirations. According to J. A. Hobson, who is one of the leading contributors to the field of idealism, so he has also tried to define idealism, although it was a very tough task, as I said that there is no commonly accepted definition of idealism. And J. A. Hobson said that idealism is the label commonly attached to the well-wishing, optimistic rationalist, particularly of the interwar period, who believed that progress in human relation is attainable through the application of human reason and underlying human interaction is a basic harmony of interest. So here, certain things can be drawn from the observation of J. A. Hobson. He said that idealism is a is a is a label and it is attached to certain scholars who were comparatively optimistic who who has given their views based on rationality. These scholars particularly observed the scenario during the interwar period. Keeping in mind the hostilities they still believe that in human relations, through human reason, human interaction can be enhanced and states can move in the direction where they have commonality of interest or where they have in harmony in their interest. In a way, J. A. Obson suggested that despite all the challenges that are prevalent or that were prevalent during the interwar period, the possibility of peace and stability, the possibility of cooperation was still there and all the states they must explore it. There are two basic premises that idealism accepts. First, current world political arrangements are inadequate. It means they acknowledge that whatever that is there at the international level, so whether it was the international state system, or international organizations, international laws, regional organization, world public opinions. Second thing, human beings, human consciousness, rationality, it has the power to change it positively, rather radically. It means that whatever conditions that are presently prevailing through human beings, through human consciousness, by applying rational thoughts, they can be positively changed. Idealism stood for eliminating war. Idealism stood for eliminating hunger and poverty. Idealism stood for ending suppression by one by another. Idealism wants to establish equality by addressing all kind of inequalities that exist. Idealism wants to deal with various forms of injustice that are prevalent. Idealism wants to end exploitation, domination of one by other. 
idealism wants to address problems like tyranny and force idealism believes that through reason through science through education all these things can be addressed and idealism is carrying a very optimistic opinion about the future so we can even say that uh, idealist scholars represent a group of scholars who are rational who are optimistic and who believe that we should work in the direction of how we can create or make a better world idealism also gives lot of importance to international law international organization international morality international institutions etc because somewhere idealist scholars they acknowledge that state has its own limitations because state actions are based on the decision of state's leadership now the leadership might have different guiding forces in case of a democratic country still there are various kind of pressures on leadership that exist it means that suppose if the leadership of a democratic country is taking a decision arbitrarily then the people they might create pressure over their own governments to withdraw from such an action but in many case it has been seen that it failed to deter the actions of the state that is the reason that idealist scholars believe that international organizations are required so when collectively group of states people mass media organization public opinions when they will come together then ultimately the state will be bound to act and bound to acknowledge or mend its ways of uh, doing something as a consequence of various approaches and bodies of thought there are various kind of terms that we see which are sometimes also used interchangeably for example cosmopolitanism where we consider ourselves as the citizen of one cosmos or one community internationalism liberalism wherein we have all these uh, uh, you know all these uh, higher ideas that uh, uh, at the international level all the state they should cooperate with each other they should work in the areas where they have commonality of interest they should try to find out the solutions of all their bilateral issues true dialogue rather than indulging in conflicts so all these terms they were very frequently used or they were lumped together and sometimes they were labeled as idealism but there are considerable differences and diversity within them although at certain level these ideas they also have some commonalities